Hello, I'm Somi Aryan. I'm a tech philosopher, author, filmmaker, and the founder of Fempeak. On this podcast, I speak to some of the most brilliant minds of our time to help us navigate emerging technologies leading to a socioeconomic singularity. Our guest on today's podcast is Amrita Sethi, the first NFT artist in UAE. In 2021, she was nominated by Dubai Arts and Culture Authority to receive the prestigious Golden Visa Residency in Dubai for 10 years for her contribution to the digital art market in the UAE. In this episode, I speak with Amrita about her art and how NFTs can empower artists in the age of Web3. I learned a lot from this interview, and I think you will too. Before we start, I want to tell you about Athletic Greens, our sponsor for today's podcast. I started taking their AGI daily supplement because I work 14 to 15 hours a day and I needed a way to stay at my peak performance all the time. By now, I've been taking it for several months and I love it. I definitely feel more mentally alert and I seem to be more energized during my workouts. Honestly, it's no wonder that Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. I wanted to share this with you because I personally have been loving it. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash summy. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash summy to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Tell me a little bit about your your journey, how you got started. Oh, is it correct that you're the first NFT artist in the Middle East? Uh, well, I don't know if it's in the Middle East, but definitely the first artist in the UAE. In the UAE, awesome. Yeah. Right, yeah, so tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, thank you so much. So as you said, my name's Amrita, Amrita Sati. I'm an NFT, or well, I'm the first NFT artist in the UAE, but I didn't start off as an art, NFT artist. I didn't even start off as an artist, actually. So I started off um, really my career in banking and finance. So I was in the banking and finance world for a very long time. So, um, you know, I started my career in London, where I worked for some of the big financial organizations there, and I moved to Dubai as well as Switzerland. And I've always been in the kind of wealth management financial sectors, right? Um, I'm originally born and brought up in Kenya. I'm of Indian origin um, and I've been traveling around the world and I'm very like internationally based, but um, I've been now living in Dubai, I would say for the last kind of 14 years, more or less on and off. And also very happy to, to say that I'm in the UAE, I'm a golden visa holder, which is, um, you know, gives kind of, um, value or prestige to to those who are in their industry, if that makes sense. So yeah, so I started off as a banker. Then about four or five years ago, I decided I wanted to do something which was more of an entrepreneurial calling. Um, and then from there, I actually left the corporate world thinking that I would just go to, I would say more just to go as an entrepreneur and stay within the financial sector. But when I did that, I took some time off, right? And normally when people take time off, um, you know, they kind of connect to themselves. That's exactly what I did. And when I was younger, I was always very much into art. And and so I decided to kind of just go back to that. I did a course at Central St. Martins in London um, on mixed media. And just, you know, that's when I created my own genre of art, right? And so my own genre of art is I, I originally I used to call it voice note art, but now I've rebranded it to, to sound bites. And so it's all based on sound storytelling and uses technology um, as well within it, right? So just to kind of give you an idea, first I say a word, so I say the word, you know, I can say your name, a city, I can say London, for example, capture the shape and structure of the sound wave, and then each of the lines of the sound wave I draw to match the meaning of the word, basically. Can I see it? Yeah, so if you kind of say behind me, like this one, okay. this says, um, I've got one over there that says Dubai, right? So Dubai, Dubai. Um, and then you can see each of the lines. This one is there, it's Delhi. Um, this one behind me is says what the NFT. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, so, and again, you know, you can see things like the blockchain and the Beeple piece of work that sold Metacov and who bought it, everything from, you know, Nine Cat, you know, crypto punks, crypto kitties. And the reason why, you know, I created that, for example, so when I, when I, cre- when I created Sound Bites, this was before I knew about NFTs, right? So it, by nature of it, it's a very dynamic art flow, like it's based on sound, it's based on so, like a storytelling. And so I created that and that was doing very well. I got chosen, you know, I won awards just for the concept. I got chosen for the Dubai Expo just based on the concept as well. Um, but then COVID hit, right? And, and then COVID, we all went kind of online. And um, when we went online, that's when I went online to see, you know, what can I do to kind of bring technology more to the forefront of what I was doing? Hence why I discovered NFTs. And when I did discover NFTs, it was relatively easy for me as a relatively new artist because I was always backed in, in um, to, you know, I, I, I've, I understood the concept of blockchain. I understood all of that from my financial days, right? So I was able to pick it up pretty quickly. And then that's when I became the first NFT artist. And it became really, um, you know, at first, nobody kind of understood what I was talking about. I never used to call it NFTs. I used to call it digital art. I didn't think NFTs would ever, ever kind of, you know, like clock on. Um, So for a year, it was a kind of a very lonely place, right? But then, you know, last year, this time, or in March 2021 is when then Beeple sold his work for $69 million. And that's when the word NFT, I would say, exploded into the mainstream, right? And when it exploded into the mainstream, that's when everybody was like, but what's an NFT? Isn't it just a JPEG? And this incredulity that why do I want to have art that I can't touch and I can't feel? And so hence the reason why I made this piece behind me, you know, because with a voice noise, it doesn't have to just be on like cities or names. It can be like concepts, right? Then I kind of started to bring animation to it. So there's a 3D animation with it. I mean, I don't know if you can, you could probably see it here. But like this has also got, you know, then I started to layer on because once you have technology, what technology does, it acts like basically another tool brush, right? Um, And I use technology as a tool brush to take something that is once a very flat 2D, you know, world, but and then make it into like a multidimensional you know, multi-sensory experience, right? So here, like, for example, if you see like, this one actually has, so it's got sound. You can you can see now it's kind of going into the artwork um, and it's taking you through it and telling you the story of the art. That's one style of augmented reality with 3D animation layered on top of it. So you've literally gone and taken a 2D flat artwork and you've completely brought it to life, right? Then from there, what I kind of did is then I say, I'm somebody who likes to just do things really differently and be the first to do things, to make things bigger, to just kind of push the boundaries, I would say. That's the best way to put it. So um, I then created or painted one of the world's largest augmented reality NFT mural here in the UAE in Dubai. Um, It's at the DIFC for people who know it. So it's the financial sector. And I created one that says future NFT Dubai. And that was the first time I put augmented reality literally on the side of a wall, right? So the whole mural jumps out at you when you actually go to the mural and you use it and you interact with it. And so that's kind of the projects up to date. And then I just recently had my latest project, which, you know, I'm happy to to tell you a bit more about if you like. Yeah, I would love to. I'm just uh, trying to look at your work as uh, listening. Um, Yeah, tell me about the latest. Yeah, so the latest project that I did is like, so, you know, so here I am, I've been doing, you know, there's like a real evolution to my work in the sense of first I start with sound, sound, create sound bites, um, create different concepts and ideas, and then, you know, a layer on different experiences, right? So this is also in this world, but also into the metaverse. So also when I created, I forgot to say, actually, when I created the mural, I also created 
I moved over from art into fashion. So I created, I don't know if you know what an abaya is. It's like- um, Yeah, I know. Um, I'm, I'm originally from Iran. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. So I created the world's first augmented reality abaya, okay. right? So physical abaya that I wear. And, and again, the augmented reality comes off my clothing. I use QR codes you know, interweaved into my clothing to bring the actual clothing to life, right? Yeah. So then I did that, but then I also put it into the metaverse. So what I then wanted to do with my latest collection was kind of showcase, I would say, all the different aspects of, you know, using it from the sound to, um, you know, from, from digital wearables, physical wearables, um but then also do something that has also that i wanted to push the boundaries right mm -hmm. so one of the great things for me about nfts and the metaverse or web3 is that and i always say this this everything is possible the only thing that limits you is your imagination right so um because it literally i mean it's it's so the opportunity is so much that it becomes overwhelming right yes yeah. like that's how crazy i mean people when they start to understand what's what we're going to be seeing out of all of this it's it's going to be crazy right and so because what you can build in the digital world can maybe not even be able to be built in the physical world right yeah yeah so i decided because i can do anything i decided that i would make my own alphabet fortunately i'm from lots of different countries and lots of different cultures but very unfortunately, for whatever reason, I can't really speak many languages other than English very well. So I can speak a bit of this, a bit of that, but I'm just really not very good at anything. So I thought my dream was always to speak a language or have, so I actually decided to just create my own language, right? And if you look at, if you look at the concept of the alphabet, the alphabet is nothing but a series of symbols. So I've effectively created my own alphabet with my own symbols. And then I've layered onto it with my concept of sound bites, which I call the alpha bites, which is also obviously a play on word of the bite of the alpha. I use the word B-Y-T-E, which is like, again, a play in technology. I'm looking at your website as we speak, and I'm going to put it in the description for people to go and see. I'm really liking this alpha bite concept. Yeah, very cool. So what I did then, thank you so much. Then what I did do with the alpha bites is I created a sculpture um, and in that sculpture because what i did is because what is the metaverse right the metaverse is being able to bring the physical world to the digital world right but what i wanted to do was bring the digital back to the physical so i called it met so the first word from my alphabites is meta reversed right so m e t you know in my language and so i created a sculpture the other thing that NFTs are known for is, is one of the advantages of being able to fractionalize ownership. So what I did is I created a physically fractionalized sculpture, right? So you physically fractionalize the sculpture and I created it from layers of aluminum dipped in silver, gold, and, you know, all of this in bronze and then, and copper, sorry. And then I created 145 slices of the sculpture. Yeah, exactly. You can kind of see those slices. Those are all individual slices. And then that's the word, the meta reversed, right? So you would get one of the NFTs, which would be one of, um, you know, here exactly the black, the flashing, and each one of the NFTs would be unique and, you know, generatively unique. So you might have some all gold or copper, and then it comes with one of these, literally these physically sliced um, sculpture, right? So that then became this was the 145 and these 145 are almost like i would say yeah the you know they would be the roadmap to my the alpha bytes right so um i've you know if you kind of do that that it's it is it's kind of the next step for me is that these people who have got this are my og collectors and they're in my bite club right and as part of the bite club you're able to get things like, you know, uh, so, you know, you build it. So from that, from the artwork, you then build a community of, you know, 145 people. Those 145 are some of the top 
I would say, leaders and experts in their field across both the traditional world as well as the crypto world. We've got amazing, you know, high quality, high caliber leaders in, in those, that collection. Um, so you also get access to a networking group within that structure. But then also the utility of that is that they also get like a, I would say like a meta pass to my next project, which is called the Meta Maison, right? And so um, the idea is that, and then within the, the Byte Club, within the Alpha Bytes, I, if you go into Decentraland, there's a sculpture of that same sculpture in Decentraland, as well as I've created a physical wearable, which is a hoodie and um, a digital wearable, and it all goes into augmented reality. So I think if you just, do you mind sharing your screen again um, on that? And I just wanna show people because actually what would be great is you have, yeah, so if you can go just to, yeah, so on the fir first page here, if you scan that QR code, right, that will open up into Instagram. You point your camera at this artwork and the entire artwork is going to come out at you. So you can use the augmented reality right now from your screen from home. And I would encourage all the users to do the same thing. So you scan it. So you would just scan it in your normal camera and then that will open into Instagram. And then you'll be able to see there's a, you know, you just need to make sure that your sound is on at the top. There's a mute button, so unmute that. Right, you scan it. QR code, okay. So now I see the filter here. Yeah, so now, now like pointed at that image on the website. Oh, Did okay, you... got it. Yeah, and now I see the, yes, got it. Okay, very cool. Understand. And then you press, you press the middle button and you're doing a story on Instagram. Very cool, perfect. I should get you onto the platform to uh, actually to talk directly to our members about what you're doing uh, and they will ask you questions and like you know there will be people who may even be interested in buying your work you know um i just bought a moonbird so i'm a little bit uh, priced out <laughs> you know i don't i don't uh, have a lot of liquidity right now because okay. also i'm building this this platform you know all my money is tied yeah. in it sounds super interesting um i think there are people in our audience who will be very interested so very cool. Okay. So you've been pretty much on your own, right? Like you've not had a community of people when you started out, you just basically got out there and did this by yourself. Yeah. It's very courageous. Just, yeah. I mean, it's just starting <laughs> from the bottom, you know, as they say, and I'm very well kind of known, I would say now in the crypto space, both here and globally, you know, for me, I'm a big predicator and sort of promoter of, you know, Web3, NFTs, the crypto community. Um, I really believe that my main focus also is now getting a lot more people, I would say, mass adoption. And this is why I kind of create art that has a physical aspect to it, because then that's the only way people can kind of understand it, I would say. This concept of digital, which is not quite physical, but it's not quite digital. And, you know, it's, you have both, right? So, because I think people want to see both. Um, and then just trying to really, you know, push the, the knowledge out there, explain to people like how to open wallets, um, you know, how to kind of own their first NFTs um, and stuff like that. So to that end is like, I started off alone, but I'm very, very lucky to have been building stuff. I've got a small team. And now my, my next project that I'm raising funds for is um, is my project called the Meta Maison, which is going to be, um, you know, my aim is for it to become the most prestigious end-to-end -end NFT art house. Um, and what does that mean? That means, you know, as NFTs becoming, like I would say a necessity, not even a nice to have, I think brands, celebrities, uh, people are coming to me to be like, okay, how do I apply an NFT strategy to what I do. So, you know, just like how you would have a fashion house, like a house of Dior and house of Gucci, I'm going to be creating an NFT art house. So mm -hmm. I will be the creative art director, and then I'll be able to help people from everything, you know, from the art to the, you know, the art and the design and the experience and whether it's got augmented reality, whether it's got virtual reality, 
then layer on the technology, so the smart contracts, how you would either use the generative art model or actually then be able to, I would say, you know, uh, or, you know, what decide what platform to list or obviously use your own smart contract. Um, and then things like helping with the marketing and the growth, building communities for people, and then also adding utilities, like just for example, like with my members, they get access to all of my events. You know, also if people want me to speak, then I issue NFTs to do that, you know, so um, there's a whole range of, you know, services, I would say that sits within it. And I want to be able to get more people on board and to kind of help more brands and celebrities and other people kind of build out their own NFT strategy and their own NFT collections. That's amazing. So how is this NFT space adopted in UAE? What's the general feeling of, because obviously there are a lot of investors there, there are a lot of people who uh, have capital, but have they actually embraced this space? Oh my God, Dubai and the UAE is where it's all at, is all I can say. So when it was COVID and everyone was, you know, wasn't able to travel, all of the, we call, we call them crypto nomads. All of the crypto nomads were coming here in, I would say, January 2021, even before things really kicked off, right? So again, it was a very quiet space. Nobody really, you know, we were a small community. And then Jan, mid March 2020 is when it all kind of went ballistic. But the UAE has created an amazing platform, um, absolutely amazing, um, you know, welcoming and embracing technology, embracing the future, providing the right platform to do that. Um, and, you know, it's creating amazing ecosystems. So there's the ecosystem of the crypto oasis here, uh, which helps you know, and it has helped thousands of companies or hundreds of companies, I would say, maybe even thousands actually of companies open up, you know, in the crypto space here, there's a massive ecosystem and the crypto. So for example, the crypto oasis is an ecosystem, which I'm part of. In fact, I sit on the board of, you know, their metaverse collection where I help kind of buy NFTs and we have everything from you know, all of the companies from gaming companies to crypto companies to tokenization to agencies. I mean, you have the foot, you, you can come here and get everything, right? And the in-person events are, are, you know, are very, there's a lot of them. I mean, you have two crypto seasons, you have one in, you know, Q1 into Q2 and then Q3 and Q4. Um, you've got so many people who come from around the world. There's so many conferences here. Um, there's so many networking opportunities. I do these things on a weekly basis. Um, so that's on a big scale, but I also have a small scale. I kind of like to bring the old concept of the art salon back, you know, the old school art salon. So I call it Monday Maison. And so where I invite, to, you know, 10, 12 people, we do a fireside chat, and then we do um, a sit down dinner, right? afterwards, which I host them in my home slash studio. And so these are the things like every day you can go to a crypto event in the UAE. Like there's always a, the community is super supportive and, you know, um, and you can see that everyone from big brands to small brands, everybody's now starting to pay attention here. That's amazing. It's so cool to hear that. I have been um, actually I was thinking about leaving the UK before certain recent things happened that they said that we are going to become the crypto hub of Europe. Then I was like, oh, okay. So it sounds like maybe they are opening up. But before that, I was seriously thinking about leaving the UK and going somewhere that is more crypto friendly. And UAE was one of the places I was looking at. I have been there, you know, and I originally come from Iran. So kind of like I know the culture and the, I know the environment. But it is hot, <laughs> like it's a little bit too hot. <laughs> no, so, no, but it, that's not true for all of the year. At yeah, all. yeah, like it's very not true at all. For the whole it's like saying the UK is always cold. I think the UK is always cold. <laughs> yeah, it's always cold. Actually, in Dubai, it's not always hot, right? So yeah. I would say that you know, for, I mean, not at all. I would say from October, I would say from mid October, even beginning of October, all the way until even now, to be honest, we're mid May. I would say by the end of May, that's a very, it's all very doable. Mm -hmm. I think June, July, August is when it gets hot. 
and so you know crypto people are like you know they're like birds of a feather that flock together they go to the nice weather yeah. you know so <laughs> i would say it was also a very clever move i would say i you know being british you know i'm very fully supportive of the uk and london and i'm very happy that you know the uk and london especially london is really welcoming people from a crypto hub but it is a very good timing right yes. because everybody is going to come into london in europe in the summer and yeah. so i think there will be i think it will become very seasonal yeah. so i think you know like already all the crypto people who have all flocked here in dubai they're now all finding a hot and they're all going to be in europe over the summer and then they'll all come back around mid-october you've got miami and that happens and NFT NYC, as well as now stuff also happening in Switzerland. So, you know, pre personally myself, I will be doing, you know, a couple of more drops, interesting things happening here in the UAE until mid end of May. I'll be in London myself. So it'll be amazing to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be doing something very exciting for London in the summer. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be creating a, a summer edition, a London summer edition. Um, which I can tell more about a bit later, but it's the idea is that, you know, with my London voice note, I'm going to be creating a summer edition of that. Um, and I will be there mid June and I'll be doing, I'm, I'm a guest of honor as an NFT artist at Annabelle's in London with Ralph Lauren, um, hosted by Ralph Lauren and the Al Jahara group, which is an all women's um, middle, you know, like an all women's kind of platform for all women entrepreneurs, you know, doing things, um, you know, there'll be some other things happening with, you know, at, the, at different locations, all part of this, like four or five day, which I'll release an NFT collection at that time, which will just be a London summer edition. Um, we're also going to Ascot and maybe doing some stuff in central London. So yes, I mean, like if I'm there, you know, maybe we can do a bit of a meetup or we can do a pop-up or something like that. And I think for me, it's just about connecting to people where they are when, you know, if we're able to, to get them in real life and, and to promote, you know, that connectivity globally. Right. And then yeah. you never know. And then I'll be in Europe over the summer. So my in-laws are based in Switzerland. My, my personal family, my mother is in London. So this is where we'll be around. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of cool NFT events happening in the summer. Definitely, definitely. I'm actually giving a couple of talks in Switzerland uh, coming up. They're taking a lot of interest in this space as well. Tell us a little bit about the next drop that's coming. And then, you know, we can tease people a little bit. I want to know more about what you're doing. Uh, so, yeah. So tell me about the next drop. What's the date? What's the, is there like a mint price? How does one get on the list? Yeah, so there's going to be potentially kind of, there's going to be one drop, maybe there might even be three drops, but there's going to be one drop in mid-June, which will be the London, sum, London Summer Edition, and that's going to be really fun and a bit flirtatious in the sense that it's going to have all the wonderful loveliness of the freshness of the green of summer and the flowers and Ascot and a bit of rough, you know, like that whole vibe, right? That happens in strawberries and, and you know, Pims and cocktail in Wimbledon. So that whole vibe will be captured in the London um, limited edition. I haven't decided how many I'm going to do as a mint. Um, and, uh, and that will be around mid June time. And I'll let you know definitely um, around the allow list and I will, that will all kind of be from my, my, my page and stuff like that. And then I've got something really exciting because I've done a lot in terms of augmented reality. I've flirted a little bit with VR, but my kind of big VR, um, I would say debut will come again in London on the 22nd of July. Uh, with a uh, amazing new metaverse called Vault Hill. And the founders were from London and now they've moved out to Dubai. And this is a very kind of hyper-realistic but romantic kind of metaverse in the sense that it's based on human-centric values. So it's a human-centric metaverse, which explores all the different values of humankind and human nature. And so I'm gonna be doing something very cool. I can't say exactly what, but it will be in VR, so everybody will be able to do it. It will be in the metaverse, but it will also be able to connect. So I've done the physical, I've done the digital, I've created the physical, I've gone in the metaverse, and I've got digital wearables. But now what I wanted to do was get into the 
um, you know, subconscious. I wanted to tap into the spiritual nature. And I think that is something very close to my heart. Um, and that is something that I think, you know, this will be a really good way of incorporating consciousness into the art. Because you see, you know, from my story, um, you know, you see that I'm somebody who overall, and this is what I kind of, you know, that I like the initiatives that I like to kind of, or the values that I give out is that I'm somebody who has followed my passion, who has followed my dreams, you know, going from banking to, to being an artist, but more importantly, to the core of it, if you look at my work, my work is about, you know, telling a story, right? And so, you know, you've heard of the phrase, a picture's worth a thousand words. I say that a word is worth a thousand pictures, right? And so when any word, whether it's your name, whether it's London, whether it's, you know, what the NFT, there's a lot of images that come up, but also in a world that we live in, our minds are like code, you know, like they're like computers and we code them, right? So if we want to change the narrative about where we want people to, to see us, how they perceive us, how they see a city, how they see, you know, your name, your everything, is we are in control of the narrative. We are the ones who are able to put new pictures in people's minds. So when you see a word, new pictures can come. You are the one who's in control of those new pictures. With those new pictures comes new characters, you know, whether it's Beeple, whether it's Metacoven, whether it's a crypto punk. These are new narratives that are shaping, and these are new characters that are shaping the future of Web3. And this is what also NFTs are doing, is that we are creating a whole new narrative. We are literally flipping the script. We're taking a canvas and remaking it, redesigning it, using technology in a way that people are forever going to now be recoded in a new way, right? And so that's really the premise of what I'm doing. So whether it's the drop in London as the summer edition, and then whether it's in the drop, the more spiritual drop that will happen in July, you know, these are all things that um, I'm very excited because each one will hopefully people would have never seen before. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. I think that's a good place to um, bring this podcast episode uh, to an end, but I would love to have you back. I think this is all fascinating. And I totally agree with you with the new narrative, with the new paradigm that is being created. And it's uh, kind of sad that some people don't see it yet, but I think they will eventually. It's just a matter of time. I, I, I was like, I reached out to somebody on uh, LinkedIn. And I was like, hey, we're doing this great thing. Do you want to learn more about it? And he said, I think NFTs are the most ludicrous thing that's ever created. I was like, oh, that's like, mm, right. Sorry, you don't see it. But it's just such a cool new uh way that humans are expressing themselves and and also organizing themselves and so i actually just gave a ted talk uh specifically about this and i ended my ted talk with with um a picture of my moonbird and i, I was like explaining you know like how hard like how, how hard i worked to get this moonbird and you know how what it means to me um and and people were fascinated so people don't move fast enough sometimes with with these things um and uh i think they will probably regret it because then they will be like oh why did i not see this coming sooner i think on that what i would always say is that you know this is why i try to use like things like augmented reality and experiences because when people start to experience things or connect to them then it means something you they you still have to tap into their old value system to be yes. able to create a new value system and I think that also the, you know, you know, we're so early in the space that anybody who comes into it, even though they would have missed out, like already like Moonbirds, like you've already missed out. If you haven't bought it, you're like already priced out of Moonbirds, for example. But the idea is that even if you missed out on that, that there can be something else. The important thing is just to be in it. Um, as they say, got to be in it to win it. Actually, um, it was a gentleman in the backstage of uh, when I was giving my TED talk who said this after my talk. Um, and I thought it was such a good quote. And I said, I wish you had told me this beforehand because I would have mentioned in my talk, which is um, the best time to have planted a tree was five years ago. The next best time is now. <laughs> 
hundred percent. And and so exactly. So it's important for people to have FOMO, but not feel that it's too late for them to get involved because yeah. the message to everybody is we everybody is still very, very, very early. I think, you know, it's just like just like how you people never thought maybe mobile phones would take off. People never thought the internet would be what it is today. Think about this is this is a complete change in the way we're going to live. Yes. And, and it's happening and it's coming. So you might as well get part of it. So as a final question, do you have children? No, I don't yet. OK, cool. Now, I was wondering if you did uh, whether like how they uh, were already maybe interacting with the metaverse or anything like that. I can that. answer that question because yeah. a lot of my friends do have kids and I've analyzed it quite a lot. Kids between the ages of six and 14 are already there. Yes. They yeah. know what NFTs are. They are in the world of Roblox. For them, a, phys a, a physical, a digital a, you know, ownership of a skin or a sneaker or something like that it just gives them the same dopamine effect as a physical object. Yes. Um, I would say the TikTok generation starts from about 12 to about 15, 16. They get it, but less so. And it's more like, you know, it's got, they're the ones who went through all the dances and stuff like that. And then the, I would say by the time you get to 17, 18, it's mixed. 50% of 18 year olds haven't heard of NFTs. Like, and the, but that's quickly going up. But I would still say that even from the ages of six and 18, there's a much varied experience. And I currently sit um, you know, on the board of you know, a, a, a company that you know, helps children or helps their families you know, expect, explain finances to them. It's called Edfundo. And these guys, you know, it's, we are looking at the next generation. So I'll be having young, you know, initiative for the young artists because it's amazing. You know, when I was younger, everybody wanted to be an investment banker because that's how the money was made. But now you ask every child, they either want to be an NFT artist or they want to be on an NFT project. And I think that is why I believe that, you know, it's let's empower the youth and let's get their ideas and get them involved. Absolutely, absolutely. And we really need more women to be in the forefront of this, which is why it's so important what you're doing. Well, thank you so much uh, you. for sharing <laughs> your, your story. And uh, I would love to invite you to come to the platform if you uh, are open to it and actually directly meet our audience and, and uh, you know, talk to them about your, uh, your work, but also give them inspiration and, and they allow them to ask you questions about what you're doing and how to how to like if they look at you and they say like how can I do something like that you know yeah. then you can give them some mentorship uh you know in in terms of where they should start from so um yeah, yeah. my pleasure I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Amrita Sethi. Be sure to check out her excellent work and follow her on social media. You can also access her art collections on OpenSea. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to it on Apple, Spotify, or any other one of your favorite podcast channels. And don't forget to give it a five-star rating and write a review. The full reviews are also available on my YouTube channel.